emotionally available as I am for anyone. I can be emotionally available for anyone and everyone. All of my loved ones, friends. <laughs> Apple just said, bitch, what friends? You know what, Apple, we're going to talk about that in family therapy. Um, <laughs> no dream.
Sorry, I'm 
society. Um, and so when we're talking to people and they're like, oh, how are you? Even though you've just like had a day, you've just had a very, very day, right? Um, you've just cried all day. You've been crying all day. Your eyes are so puffy. You're wearing the biggest sunglasses ever. Um, and you are grocery store, you're at the grocery store buying your favorite comfort foods and then you're going to go home cry some more under a heating pad and watch your favorite comfort show or self-sabotage I like to do this one too um, I would like to know what is your no, it's probably not a healthy conversation I mean, okay, no, what's your favorite self-sabotage song uh, I really like Trainwreck by James Arthur, and I really like Iris by the Goo Goo Dolls, um, those were a few sad songs that I self-sabotage with, um, you know, you can go with the sad movie self-sabotage yourself, usually when I'm in a self-sabotaging mode, like when I'm really struggling, I'm watching the Vampire Diaries. Um, and you know where I think that stems from, like that might sound silly, but I think when, with the Vampire Diaries is a really emotional show, like there's always something that's pulling on your heartstrings, right? And give me a little bit of fantasy and pulling on my heartstrings and that's, um, might be... Uh, might be one for me, right? But I think at the time that I found the Vampire Diaries, which was many, many, many years ago, 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 ago like eight, nine years ago, when I started watching the Vampire Diaries, it was a time in my life where I was just really, really struggling. And, um, shut off person a lot of the times. Now, I'm very emotionally available all the time for my loved ones, people around me, strangers, whoever it is. I can go there with people. But your sweet friend Maddie can't go there with herself. She really, really struggles too. Really struggles too. That way since I was a child. Uh, it was how I survived by shutting off emotionally. There are many other things that play into it from my childhood that I don't really want to get into. Um, and it's not the video for. But I I also come from a place where I'm from Texas, fun times. Sometimes, um, the most stereotypical idea that you have of Texas is where I'm from. The most intense part of all those stereotypes is where I'm from. It's where I'm from. especially within culture there, you don't show emotion. Like, no emotion at all. Show emotion. You don't talk about it. If you're going to cry, you go and do it in private. Um, <laughs> I, uh, well, no, I don't. No, I won't share that. 
emotions are a no-go. That is a no-go, my friends. Um, it's very pull yourself up by your bootstraps. You don't show any emotion. You shove it. A lot of people drink it down. Um, especially there. And so that was also, it's not, in my household, my mom was never like that throughout most of my childhood. She wasn't like that at all. She wanted to be so different from those around her of what she, from how like she had been raised and what she had been raised around. And she didn't want that for her children. Um, and so she did her very best with what she knew. Never. 
bar stops. Um, <laughs> my brother used to call me Mom with the big M. Mom with the big M. Now, I am just naturally have a motherly, um, kind of vibe to me where I'm always, like, nurturing those around me. And, um, I just take care of those around me. So it's just in my nature, I think. But then add on, like, it's, I did, like, it. Anyways, if you yourself right now or were the older sibling or the younger sibling or just the child and you didn't even have siblings but you had to take on responsibility, that weren't yours to take on. I I understand the heaviness of that. I do. I understand the heaviness of that and how draining that can be and how frustrating. Understand. I just want you to know that you're not alone. You're not alone. You're not, 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 not alone. It's like on, on Mother's Day, I always like to talk about the, um, the, uh, the sisters that take on the responsibilities or even the brothers. Or really, the sisters, and then like on Father's Day, it's it's the same. But you know, anyways, I always just make sure to have a nod for those that took on motherly responsibilities as children, and then that carries on into adulthood, right? My brother and I. So we get we get a little bit of both, 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 both. He's only ever known me to be a motherly, motherly, motherly. Again, that's just kind of in in my nature, just slightly in my nature, just in general to be that way. Um, but but. Sorry, that was kind of a cluster. I'm struggling with extreme brain fog today. Um, and then, especially me trying to express how I'm feeling and my thoughts and processing through, I communicate it to you. Um, again, I'm just not the best at. some things going on or actually, yeah, here's example. Something is going on, you've hurt my feelings and I'm going to sit down and talk to you about it. I will repeat myself over and over and over and over like at least the exact same thing but being worded differently in about five, six different ways. And it's an anxious thing thing and um, it's not that I'm meaning just to 
actually getting it's not coming through the way that I would like and so um, I try and express it a different way and then I'm like oh my god but like what if they I've just hurt their feelings or they're not getting it so then I then I try and do it again and again and my brain also goes at a faster speed than other people's such as like my loved ones with ADHD which is most people in my life it can be really hard to communicate with them because if we're talking I talk a thousand miles an hour and I process things really quickly what you've just told me and so I can spit something back automatically and my my sweet sweet loved ones with ADHD can't do that they're by the time that I'm on let's say by the time I have said 10 different things they're still on the second thing that I've said or first thing still trying to process it and understand what I've just said and how they're going to communicate that they haven't heard anything past that number one or two thing that I've just said, right? And so then when I finish 
things that I have a hard time with my feelings, with my anything to do with me emotionally, other people, other people, I can go there and be there for all day long and I am a support, emotional support for the truth feeling. 
those feel like hard words for me. So to say peachy, number one, just kind of fits me because uh, I'm just a little condescending in general and sarcastic if you don't know this about me. Um, so if someone asks this certain person that I uh, have in, in my life, I'll say, how are you? And I'll say, I'm fine. a second time and they're like, are you fine or are you peachy? Are you okay or are you peachy? And then by the second time, I um, a lot of times will have have it in me, have that 
shared something. 